Nigeria's inflation rate for April has just been released, coming in at 33.69% below analyst expectations. Today, I will be joined by an economist to provide insights into this unexpected figure and the broader economic landscape. We will discuss the factors behind this marginal deceleration, or you can say marginal disinflation, the outlook for price reductions and implications of monetary policy decisions on the economy. Well, a financial analyst, Oladipa Jai, head of fixed income and forex chapel Hill Denham, joins me for this. Thank you so much for joining me today, Oladipo. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me here. All right, well, Nigeria's inflation in April printed 33.69% below analyst expectations, and also across the board, we're seeing marginal disinflation month on month. What do you think is responsible for this? Well, um, I think uh, basically uh, I was still uh, ascribing some of the uh, um, Glory to uh, the action of the monetary policy guys. And uh, if you remember the month of February, there was a 400 basis point rate hike, and we saw that 300 basis points came in March. And um, the figure we're currently talking about is the April figure. Of course, you expect to see a large effect on some of these policies. And if you notice very well, uh, the central bank may be more hawkish um, since um, February. Uh, if you check the overnight and OPM window, we tend to see that most of the rates are very close to 30% as a result of the death of the equity system. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll stress some of the, the way uh, to, to the monetary policy that's uh, based on uh, the current policy direction. All right, so talking about this disinflation, you've get, you gave your reasons, but I also know that some persons are saying that usually, or let's say typically, the NBS gets the survey during the first two weeks of the month. And for these people, they are saying maybe we should expect some form of disinflation trend. Uh, you know, maybe we shouldn't in, sort of expect this disinflation in May. And that, of course, is because NBS typically captures the first two weeks of the month in its survey. And we know that it was towards the third and the fourth week in April that we started seeing the Naira tumbling, you know, sort of reversing the gains in May during the first two weeks. And that was the time we also heard uh, stories about, well, not stories, that was the time when we also started talking about ele electricity. Yeah, that's where we had that uh, sort of review in electricity prices. And it was also at that period that we had uh, the fuel scarcity that, of course, had significant impact on the price for, uh, let's say, transportation and all of that. So do you share the same sentiment? Of course. Uh, but I agree very much with that because basically you can't use uh, just a month uh, situation to actually uh, measure uh, the, the direction as we speak, that this should be a plus of uh, because basically it's not that bad. It's uh, steady that uh, it's out of where we actually uh, uh, landed uh, at somewhere at some point in uh, the early, early part of April. And uh, uh, as we speak currently, that's going to be not of the thousand of my country. Of course, we are spent to actually see that in the part as well. So uh, I share their view because uh, when you look at what is happening post uh, or post uh, was April, yeah, we tend to want to have this perception that, uh, of course, may, may, may likely see a bit of uh, change in make or situation that some of those things that you have mentioned. Uh, of course, in terms of uh, electricity, it's very important. Uh, for me, I don't think uh, the, the increase or the effect of that will be so I will be so great because when you check the percentage of people that are actually affected with this, uh, you can't compare because majorly, major, majorly, you tend to see a lot of people around. Uh, between band B and, uh, and, and, the, uh, and band E, which is the last, uh, uh, last part of, of the band. Uh, so uh, basically, it's only uh, some selected few that, uh, that will be affected, and the level of effect on some of these people uh, will not uh, aggressively affect the figure, like uh, a lot of people have actually uh, envisaged. Uh, but the issue of uh, currency, I think we will see uh, the effect of that uh, uh, on that as coupled with the fact that a uh, major part of, of, uh, of the month of um, uh, May um, we actually suffer, uh, actually struggling to actually get to actually buy the PMS. And uh, in some places, uh, we saw uh, a situation where uh, people were buying very close to a thousand per liter. And we expect some of these things to actually impact people. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I feel that I, said, I actually shared that sentiment. Well, it's certainly not the time to celebrate, if you ask me, anyway. And for many Nigerians, irrespective of uh, what sort of disinflation we're talking about, what they want is a reduction in the prices of goods and services. And add to that, actual disinflation year on year. How soon can that happen? 
I've shown that that's a million dollar question uh, because uh, basically what's happening currently is that uh, uh, we found that, that um, a lot of people are trying to uh, be, as a main, basically maybe one spot side that uh, they are leaving uh, no stone on top to ensure that uh, um, they actually actually uh, need this support. Uh, uh, we have seen the central bank government also mentioned this uh, early part of the week, uh, saying that they will do uh, they will stop at nothing to ensure that they are able to actually uh, uh, stop the warning and the uh, current um, rewarding inflation. So, uh, so I, I, I think uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to start seeing a, a bit of respite uh, from um, um, Q3. And um, one of my view remains the fact that uh, the base year effect uh, that we are likely to have to see. And also, um, Q3 tends to be a period of harvest, and uh, we expect to have to see. A situation whereby this will pose a bit of respite uh, in, in the figure. Uh, also, um, to a great extent, uh, if the currency can't be stabilized around this level uh, uh, for a greater part of the middle of the year, I, I think that will also be more like a respite uh, in that direction. So I, I feel that uh, in, before the end of uh, basically, I will take my bets around uh, the month of uh, uh, September, where uh, you expect to have seen aggressive. Uh, uh, shown out of agricultural produce. Uh, I feel by then uh, that will be participation people and at the same time uh, we expect it to actually uh, start going down. I like how you made reference to agriculture because that sort of speaks to food inflation and we also have the pasture effects of the exchange rate on Nigeria's inflation which you also talked about. You know beyond just hoping and uh, looking forward to or just assuming that things will get better and the currency, uh, the forex will, be, forex will become stable, what do you think can actually be done to ensure that this happens? Talk about food inflation, talk about you know the currency that of course is the foreign exchange what, what do you think can be done to address this issue so that we can have the um, inflation rate taper well on the part of the exchange rates um, i think uh, one of the reasons why i expect to see a bit of stability um, um, by key to be remain like that uh, when you're looking for it in Nigeria is currently in top with one bank and uh, and they are at the latter part of, uh, of the engagement. Also, also uh, Nigeria is looking at going to the European market uh, sometime in June. And then uh, uh, because the, the media of Insta Finance also reiterated that uh, sometime this week. And also the Dalfra from the uh, investment is also part of the, the expected inflow that the market is actually looking at. And uh, when you look at the totality of this expected inflow, uh, you will get close to uh, about 15 billion. And uh, so let's even have the conservative, uh, let's say like a 10 billion, uh, where you get an eight loss of, of, of like uh, 10 billion into our market, that would actually help to actually stabilize the currency uh, uh, for, for, for a better part of the year. And aside that also, um, the currently Nigeria is no more important than uh, this, uh, um, as you speak, I think uh, it's, there's nothing like a uh, um, demand problem again. I think the problem is, uh, sorry, supply problem again. The problem is more like demand problem now. And also, also Nigeria is now also actually uh, imports a uh, addition for, uh, which simply means that Dangote Fire is going to do justice to that. And uh, so, and I think that we're expecting that uh, the same producer to actually come to the market with PMS that comes Q3 uh, based on their uh, statements. And uh, if this actually materializes, uh, we tend to actually see a situation sure that we don't need to actually bring in the five products into the market again. Uh, so it's also mean that uh, the uh, central bank can have to reserve uh, uh, the fund to use to actually import this, some of the fine products. And what do they now need to do with it is uh, to actually help to actually stabilize the economy. Uh, the core responsibility of the central bank is to ensure that uh, the stability of currency, the stability of economy. And uh, if they fall short of this, it will affect businesses uh, over generally. Uh, we've seen a situation where most businesses are actually posting, posting aggressive loss as a result of volatility in the FX space. So I think that the central bank also understand that the need to actually ensure that uh, the predictability of the currency so that business can actually plan. Well, so talking about the central bank, we know the MPC will be meeting next week and uh, we're likely to see another, you know, rate hike or something. Does this bother you? Well, for me, I, I, like I, I said earlier somewhere, I feel that their lifelines remain just under this one, just uh, my view, though. 
uh, because I, I, I don't see uh, Central Bank coming into the market to do another business point. Uh, my view remains the fact that uh, as much as uh, we are trying to actually uh, uh, contract the economy, as much as we are trying to actually start with the economy of uh, liquidity, we also need to consider the impact of that on organized on companies as well. Um, what we are currently doing is more to actually uh, um, actually cater or handle the demand uh, a pool side of, of the inflation figure. Uh, so it simply means that uh, we are actually trying to discourage uh, borrowing. We are trying to actually encourage uh, uh, investment. That would sound uh, very great. Uh, but also, we need to also look at the other side of it as well. Imagine a 200 business point rate hike. It simply means that uh, companies uh, would now have to actually access uh, from, from, uh, from banks as high as uh, maybe 33, 34% level or even as high as 35% level. Of course, this will have also impact on the economy. It also means that uh, it will push um, some elements of uh, factor through the cost push uh, yeah, path in, into the inflation figure as well. So I, I think that uh, we cannot uh, perpetually continue to raise rates. Uh, we also need to look at uh, the, the, the supply side of this thing. How do we need, what do we need to do uh, to actually do the aspects of the cost supply side? What, what do we expect the fiscal policy guide to actually do in this uh, direction to ensure that uh, on that part as well, uh, inflation is being uh, catered for? So that as supply increases, uh, that will moderate the price which in turn uh, will actually drop the entire pressure. So I think uh, uh, the monetary policy guys, I don't, I don't think they have uh, so much uh, room, edge room to actually raise data aggressively at this uh, the meeting. Uh, so also, uh, we saw well, just like what we just discussed about inflation as well. Uh, in their mindset, it could also be that they could, they will also look at it from this perspective that they, we expect to see like the effects of uh, some of the aggressive policies that they have actually uh, deployed to the market at the early part of the year. Uh, so they could also think from this perception that could it be that uh, we are starting seeing impact of some of these policies. Uh, so they could also, uh, so that's one of the reasons I feel that they, they can actually do like a hundred business point and do more like a week and see what would that would be, what would be the impact of that while they wait for, for the next meeting in July. If I get you correctly, you're saying that uh, we should probably expect a hundred business point hike. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I, I like what you said anyway, but let me just put this to you. Uh, we know that elevated rates sort of attract investors to the fixed income markets, thereby making Forex available to the economy. However, we're also looking at the broader implications of sustaining a high interest rate environment, which you have also said could be concerning, and this might create problems for the private sector who also want to raise funds from the same market. Now, is it in about time we sort of started looking at preventing the economy from overheating and mitigating the risk of, you know, raising poverty lines and shrinking productivity? Do we still need to go ahead with this 100 business points that you're betting on? Uh, you see, for, for, to be realistic, on the monetary policy guys, they don't, they don't have too much uh, um, weapon in their, in their hand to actually use around these things. Uh, what they have is the Omo issues of Omo, uh, CIR, uh, raising rates, and some of these things they have actually deployed. And uh, on their part, if they are not seeing results, uh, aggressive results, uh, you know, they will not actually want to just hold their hands and want to leave everything on, on the table of the fiscal policy guide. Uh, they also will continue to be uh, innovative on how to actually for how to sell the worry and pressure people. Uh, so, and that's one of the reasons why I feel that um, I, I, I don't think they will just want to leave the meeting. Uh, without doing anything, I just said, oh, well, okay, let's wait till the month of July. And that's one of the reasons why I said that for me, I feel that uh, they are, uh, they are, the headroom they have is going to be under this point. And uh, I don't expect them to actually want to do uh, uh, more than that at these uh, uh, coming, uh, meetings. Of course, they can try to say, okay, uh, let's maintain and see what happens. Uh, but I think that um, they would like, they would actually want to actually skew towards uh, being uh, close to 100 basis points than just uh, leaving the meeting without doing anything. All right, thank you so much, Aladipo Ajayi, Head of Fixed Income and Forex, Chapel Hill, Denham. Thank you for your time on the show today. You're welcome.